So there's trumpets and shouts within. Ah, blah, 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 and enter Theseus, Apollo, Prometheus, and we are tight, disguised with a garland, etc. You have done worthily. I have not seen since Hercules a man of tougher sinews. Whatever you are, you run the best in wrestle that these times can allow. Uh, I'm proud to please you. What country bred you? This, but far off, prince. Are you a gentleman? My father said so, and to those gentle uses gave me life. Are you his heir? His youngest, sir. Your father. Sure, he is a happy sire, then. What proves you? Uh, a little of all noble qualities. I could have kept a hawk and well have hallowed to keep to deep cry of dogs. I dare not praise my feet in horsemanship, yet they that knew me would say it was my best piece. At last and greatest, I would be thought a soldier. You are perfect. Corinthians? Oh, yes. That's me. Upon my soul, a proper man. He is so. How do you like him, lady? I admire him. I have not seen so young a man so noble, if he say true of his sort. I believe his mother was a wondrous handsome woman. His face, methinks, goes that way. But his body and fiery mind illustrate a brave father. Mark how his virtue, like a hidden sun, uh, breaks through his baser garments. He's well got sure. What made you seek this place, sir? Noble Theseus, to purchase name and do my ablest service to such a well-found wonder as thy worth, for only in thy court of all the world dwells fair-eyed honor. <laughs> Thanks, Theseus. All his Whatever words. you are, are mine, and I shall give you and most noble service to this lady, this bright young virgin, and pray observe her goodness. You have honored her fair birthday with your virtues, and in your due, you are in hers. Kiss a fair answer. Sir, we are much indebted to your travel, nor shall we lose your wish, Perithius. Dispose of this fair gentleman. And then he said the thing that he just said. And yeah. Then I say, sir, you are a noble giver. <laughs> Dearest beauty, let, uh, thus let me seal my vowed faith. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. When your servant, your most unworthy creature, but offends you, command him die. He shall. That were too cruel. If you deserve well, sir, I shall soon see. You are mine, and somewhat better than your rank, I'll use you. I see you furnished, and because you say you are a horseman, I must needs entreat you this afternoon to ride. But tis a rough one. I like him better, Prince. I shall not then freeze in my saddle. Sweet, you must be ready. And you, Amelia, and you, friend, and all, by tomorrow, by the sun, do to do observance to Flory May in Diane's woods. Wait, well, sir, upon your mistress. Emily, I hope he shall not go afoot. That were a shame, sir, while I have horses. Take your choice, and what you want at any time, let me but know it. If you serve faithfully, I dare assure you, you'll find a loving mistress. If I do not, let me find that my father ever hated disgrace and blows. Go, lead the way, you have won it. It shall be so. You shall receive all dues fit for the honor you have won. To a wrong else. Sister, be shrew my heart. You have a servant that, if I were a woman, would be master. But you are wise. I hope too wise for that, sir. My God! <laughs> okay, here comes the jailer's daughter. the prison and to jailer's daughter alone. Let all the dukes and all the devils roar. He is at liberty. I have ventured for him. 
and out I have brought him to a little wood, a mile hence. I have sent him where a cedar, higher, cedar, cedar, higher than all the rest, spreads like a plain, fast by a brook, and there he shall keep close, till I provide him files and food, for yet his iron bracelets are not off. O oh, love, what a stout-hearted child thou art! My father durst better have endured cold iron than done. I love him, beyond love and beyond reason, or wit or safety. I have made him know it. I care not, I am desperate. If the law find me and then condemn me for it, some wenches, some honest-hearted maids will sing my dirge, and tell to memory my death was noble. Dying almost a martyr, that way he takes I purpose is my way too. Sure, he cannot be so unmanly as to leave me here. If he do, maids will not so easily trust men again. And yet, he has not thanked me for what I have done. No, not so much as kissed me. And that, methinks, is not so well. Nor scarcely could I persuade him to become a free man. He made such scruples of the wrong he did to me and to my father. Yet I hope when he considers more, this love of mine will take more root within him. Let him do what he will with me, so he will use me kindly. For use me so he shall, or I'll proclaim him, and to his face no man. I'll presently provide him necessaries, and pack my clothes up, and where there is a path of ground I'll venture, so he be with me. By him, like a shadow, I'll ever dwell. Within this hour, the hubbub will be all over the prison. I am then, kissing the man they look for. Farewell, Father. Get many more such prisoners and such daughters, and shortly you may keep yourself. Now to him. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I say we will go to that oh. and take a break. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. That's all. Okay. okay. Oh, cool. Cornets and children. Reminded. The main Archite alone, the Duke has lost Hippolyta. Each took a several gone. This is a solemn rite they owe bloomed May, and the Athenians pay it to the heart of ceremony. Oh, Queen Amelia, fresher than May, sweeter than her gold buttons on the boughs, or all the enameled knacks of the mead or garden. Yea. We challenge to the bank of any nymph that makes the stream seem flowers. Thou, oh, jewel, all oh, the wood, all oh, the world, hast likewise blessed a place with thy soul presence in thy rumination that I, poor man, might eftsoons come between and chop on some cold thought. Thrice blessed chance, to drop on such a mistress, expectation most guiltless on it. Tell me, O oh Lady Fortune, next after Emily, my sovereign, how far I may be proud. She takes strong note of me, hath made me near her, and this beauteous morn, the primest of all the year, presents me with a brace of horses. Two such steeds might well be a be by a pair of kings backed in a field that their crowns titles try. Alas, alas, poor cousin Palamon, poor prisoner, <laughs> thou so little dreamest upon my fortune that thou thinkest thyself the happier thing to be so near Amelia. Me thou deemest a Thebes, and therein wretched, although free. But if thou knewest my mistress breathed on me, and that I eared her language, lived in her eye, oh, cause what passion would enclose thee! Traitor! Kinsman, thou should perceive my passion. If these signs of imprisonment were off me, and these hand but crowned of a sword, by all oaths in one I and the justice of my love would make thee a confessed traitor. O oh, thou most perfidious that ever gently looked, the voidest of honor that e'er bore gentle token, falsest. 
Jesus. That ever blood made kin calls thou her thine. I'll prove it in thy shackles with these hands. And the page turns. <laughs> Void of appointment. Uh, and that thou liest and art a very thief in love, a chatting full lord, and how nor worth the name of villain had I a sword. These house clogs off. Dear cousin Palamon. Ah, cousin, ah, the archite. Give me language such as thou hast shown me faith. Not finding in the circuit of my breast any gross stuff to form me like your blazon holds me to this gentleness of answer. Tis your passion that thus mistakes. The which to you being enemy cannot to me be kind. Honor and honesty I cherish and depend on, howsoe'er you skip them in me, and with them fair cause I'll maintain my proceedings. Pray be pleased to show in generous terms your griefs, since that your, quest since that your questions with your equal, who professes to clear his own way with the mind and sword of a true gentleman. That thou durst, Argyne. My cause. I cause you have been well advertised, how much I dare. You have seen me use my sword against the advice of fear. Sure of another, you would not hear me doubt it. But your silence should break out, though in the sanctuary. Sir, I have seen you move in such a place which well might justify your manhood. You are called a good knight and a bold, but the whole week's not fair if any day it rain. Their valiant temper men lose when they incline to treachery, and then they fight the compiled bears would fly were they not tied. Kinsmen, you might as well speak. Speak this and act it in your glass mm -hmm. as to his ear which you now as to his ear which now disdains you. Come up to me and quit me of these cold jives. Give me a sword, and though it be rusty in the charity of one meal, lend me. Come before me then, a good sword in thy hand. Uh, do but say that Emily is thine, and I will forgive the trespass that you, excuse me, thou hast done me. Yea, my life is thou carried, and brave souls in shades that they have died manly, which will seek of me some news from earth, they shall get more than this. But this, that thou art brave and noble. Be content again. <laughs> Take you to your Hawthorne house. With counsel of the night, I will be here with wholesome viands. These impediments will I file off. You shall have garments and perfumes to kill the smell of the prison. And after, when you shall stretch yourself and say, but, Archite, I am in plight, there shall be at your choice both sword and armor. Oh, you heavens! There is such so noble air a guilty business. None but only Archite. Therefore, none but our kite in this kind is so bold. Sweet Palamon, I do embrace you and your author, for your author do I only serve your person. Without hypocrisy, I may not wish more than my sword's edge on it. You hear the horns. Enter your musset, lest this match between us be crossed in a net. Give me your hand. Farewell. 
I'll bring you every needful thing. I pray you take comfort and be strong. <laughs> pray hold your promise and do the deed with a bent brow. Most certain you love me not. Be rough with me and pour this oil out of your language. By this air I could each word have a cuff. My stomach not reconciled by reason. Plainly spoken, yet pardon me hard language when I spur <laughs> my horse. I chide him not. Content and anger in me have but one face. Hark, sir, they call the scattered to the banquet. You must guess I have an office there. Ah, sir, your attendance cannot please heaven, and I know your office unjustly is achieved. If a good title, I am persuaded this question, sick between us by bleeding must be cured. I am a suitor that to your sore you will bequeath this plea and talk of it no more. But this one word, you are going now to gaze upon my mistress and note you, mine she is. Nay then. You talk of feeding me to bring me strength. You are going now to look upon the sun that strengthens when it looks upon. There you have a vantage o'er me, but enjoyest it still. I enforce my remedy. Farewell! <laughs> scene. <Night> three. <laughs> scene. Scene two? No, I'm just saying. Scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like three. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, scene two, the open country. Enter Jailer's daughter. Oh. <laughs> he has mistook the break I meant. Is gone after his fancy. Tis now well nigh morning. No matter. Would it were perpetual night and darkness, Lord of the world. Hark, tis a wolf. In me hath grief slain fear, at, but and but. For one thing, I care for nothing, and that's Palamon. I reck not if the wolves would draw me, so he had this file. What if I hallooed for him? I cannot halloo. If I woke, what then? If he not answered, I should call a wolf, and do him but that service. I have heard strange howls this live long night. Why may it not be they, may, they have made prey of him? He has no weapons. He cannot run. The jingling of his jibes, the jingling of his jibes, might call fell things to listen, who have in them a sense to know a man unarmed and can smell where resistance is. I'll set it down. He's torn to pieces. They howled many together, and then they fed on him. So much for that. Be bold to ring the bell. How stand I then? All's charred when he is gone. No, no, I lie. My father's to be hanged for his escape, myself to beg. If I prized life so much as to deny my act, but that I would not. Should I try death by dozens? I am more. Food took I none these two days. Sip some water. I have not closed my eyes, save when my lids scoured off their brine. Alas, dissolve my life. Let not my sense unsettle, lest I should drown or stab. Or hang myself, O state of nature, fall, fail together in me. Since thy best props are warped, so which way now? The best way is the next way to a grave. Each errant step beside is torment. Lo, the moon is down, the crickets chirp, the screech owl calls in the day of the dawn. All offices are done, save what I fail in. But the point is this, in end, and that is all. What do you think? Yeah. Nice. What did she do? Hey. Where did she go? What, did, what was her motive <laughs> right here? Oh, Pop motive. quiz. Mm. Is she trying to um, is she trying to say that life isn't worth living if he's yeah, if, if she's if he's gone yeah. might as well not them left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that is the halfway point to her madness. She knows that something's wrong. She's not getting what she wants. 
It's all but, downhill from here. Right. <laughs> so, Ascending into the valley. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Go track down the archive. No. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Back again. Enter our uh, country. Enter archive with meat, wine, and files. I thought it said flies. Flies. I thought it said flies. 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 The same, I have brought you food and files. Come forth and fear not, here is no Theseus. None so honest, Archite. That's no matter, we'll argue that hereafter. Come, take courage, you shall not die thus beastly. Here's a drink, I know you are faint, then I'll talk further with you. Archite, thou mightst now poison me. I might, but I must fear you first. Sit down and good now. No more of these vain parleys. Let us not, having our ancient reputation with us, make talk for fools and cowards. To your health. <laughs> Pray, sit down then and let me entreat you by all the honesty and honor in you. No mention of this woman twill disturb us. We shall have time enough. Well, sir, I pledge you. Drink a good hearty draught, it breeds good blood, man. Do you not feel it for you? Stay, I'll tell you after a draught or two more. Spare it not, the Duke has more. <laughs> Cuz, eat now. Yes. I'm glad you have such so good a stomach. I am flattered to have so good meat to it. <laughs> this is not mad. Lodging here in the wild place. <laughs> oh, yay. For them that have wild consciences. How taste your victuals? Your hunger needs no sauce, I see. I think that word is vittles. Oh, vittles. Vittles. How taste your vittles? Your hunger needs no sauce, I see. Not much. But if it did, yours is too tart. Sweet cousin, what is this? Venice. Ah, oh, it is a lusty meat. Ah. Um, uh, give me some more wine. Oh, here are Christ, to the wenches that we have known in our days. The Lord Seward's daughter. <laughs> Do you remember her? <laughs> After you, cuz. Ah, she loved a black haired man. And she did so. Well, sir. I have heard some called him Archite. And Out with it, Faith. Ah, she met him in an arbor. And what she did there, cuz, play on the virginals. Something <laughs> she did, sir. Ah, made her groan a month for it. Or two, or three, or ten. The marshal's sister had her share, too, as I remember, cousin. <laughs> Else there be tales abroad, you'll pledge her? Well, yes. A pretty brown wench tis. There was a time when young men went a hunting, and a wood and a broad beach, and thereby hangs a tale. <laughs> uh, oh, for Emily. Oh, for my life. Fool, away with a strained mirth. I say again, that sigh was breathed for Emily. Face, cousin. Durst thou break first? You are wide. Ah, by heaven and earth, there's nothing in thee honest. Then I'll leave you. You are beast now. Ah, thou makest me, traitor. There's all things needful, files and shirts and perfumes. I'll come again some two hours hence and bring that thou shalt quiet all. Sword? An armor? Fear me not, you are now too foul. Farewell, get off your trinkets. Clap. You shall want <laughs> not. Uh, I'll hear no more. Why, if he keep touch, he dies for it. Why don't we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs>